fresh off the plane, coming home from Japan, fresh off the plane, literally minutes ago, a, a true mensch joins us today on the program. I wanted to have you on. DJ, thank you so much for doing this. Congratulations, my man. Thanks, Ariel. I appreciate it, man. It was a, it was a good fight. Yes. Okay. And how are you feeling? I see the eyes a little bit uh, puffy there. How are you feeling afterwards? I feel good, man. Feel good. No injuries. Um, just a little sore as usual. Um, a little oh. pain right here in this hand. Um, other than that, man, uh, I feel good. What do you think? You think it's broken? I don't think it's broken, man. When I hit him, I, I kind of like rolled my hand a little bit. I was trying to, you know, hit him in the jaw, but I actually hit him like back here, like an ear. So this one a little pain here when I bend my wrist back and forth. But other than that, everything else was good. Of the three fights in one so far, uh, would it be fair to say this was the best one for you? Yes. <laughs> it was. I, I think it was the the time difference, man, and catering to the TNT. Uh, a lot of people don't understand when you travel that far. And I usually go out 10 days out, and then you have to do all the media obligations. And then at nighttime, you train, and then you get back to the hotel. It's like maybe 10 o'clock at night, then you get some food, and then you got to go back to bed. It's it's a lot of work. So with this whole setup, I'll wake up in the morning, go eat breakfast, go train at like 11, 30, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and then get back, do all the media obligations, chill, go to bed, and do it every single day. And so when it came to fight day, I was already acclimated to this to that set of time. Wow. So so you actually just stayed on American time? Pretty much, yeah. I did. I did. I was working up at 6.30 in the morning in Japan every day. And then I would train at, you know, 8 p.m. American time. And then go to bed around maybe 11 p.m. American time, which would be like, I think it was like 7.30, 9 o'clock p.m. there so I, I don't know but i pretty much did on american time now is there also something to the fact that all right now we've done it three times where we're the new organization like it's no longer new right it's all kind of more familiar the nerves are gone you don't have to prove yourself to anyone you know all the people you know everyone behind the scenes like do you just feel a little more comfortable now after three fights yeah 100 percent. i mean especially you know when i having you know my coat my main coach in, in the corner you know me james and tony are starting to get our little bond going and when I came back to the corner, I sat down and I was like, what y'all think? What you, what you, what you, what you guys thinking? And we're, we're sitting there having a full-blown conversation uh, during the rounds. And I'm also getting adjusted to my diet. You know, I've been, uh, I've been on three rounds of antibiotics this training camp. And then the previous one, we had antibiotics on me as well. So I think I'm at the end of this, you know, whole SIBO battle. And then, then once I'm done with this, once I test for it again, I hope I get my weight back to where it should be, which is like, you know, 140 instead of walking around like 136 pounds. Wait, what are you talking about with the antibiotics? I didn't know this. What, what were you dealing with? Um, I've been, I got diagnosed with SIBO after my first fight against uh, Wakamatsu. It's basically small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Basically, your small intestine gets uh, overgrowth in bacteria. So whatever you eat that's fermented uh, basically draws in water um, into your intestines and it causes bloating, uh, pain, uh, gas, uh, um, another form of his acid reflux, GERD. So I've been battling this for since March. And um, you guys jump on antibiotics to regulate the, to kill the bad bacteria. So I've been on antibiotics for a long damn time. Damn. And then when I was in Japan, when I was in Japan, I finished this training camp. I was on uh, uh, Cyfaxin. And then I did, I did 20 days, 15 days of Cyfaxin, then 10 days of Flagyl. And then I did 30 days of herbal antibiotics. And then um, three days before the fight, I cut out all that stuff. And then um, now I'm back home. So I got to wait two weeks and then I test again for SIBO. And then if, if it's still there, then I go back on antibiotics. So I'm hoping this time I don't SIBO, then I could start re introducing things back into my diet and get my weight back to normal. Because uh, the day after the fight, I woke up weighing 134.2. So my body's, I'm just small right now. Really, really small. How did you find out that you had this? Um, so after I got back home from Japan, uh, actually Thailand, um, I had like, we ordered pizza cause we're about to go to Florida and I had like six slices of pizza. And next thing you know, my summer was just jacked up, just jacked up. And I was like, huh, that's unusual. I eat whatever I want. Cinnamon toast crunch, whatever I want. And then went to Florida and I tried to clean up my diet and it just kept on being painful, painful, painful. I'll go out to eat have a big meal, all healthy. And next, you know, I'm just passing gas like that. Then just think, then just think, just passing gas. <laughs> and next, you know, I was like, something's wrong. I, I got to go to see a doctor. And 
saw a doctor, did, you know, the stool sample, blood sample, all that stuff. And he was like, your body's having a hard time digesting carbohydrates. And I was like, okay. And then I talked to another uh, doctor in the office and they were like, how did this happen? I was like, I don't know, it just showed up. And they're like, you might have SIBO, let's test for that. And then I tested and they're like, yeah, hey, yeah, SIBO. And they put me on uh, antibiotics. Then I trained for Wakamatsu and then fought in Manila. Then after that, came home, had some rib injuries, did the SIBO test again. They're like, oh, it's still there. And I'm like, what the, f okay, well, what else you want to do? And they're like, let's just hit you with every um, antibox we got. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. And then now we're at the end of that. And hopefully when I test on the 22nd, I believe, um, we're clear, man. And how do you contract or develop something like this? So typically, um, it's it's almost in a form of IBS, which is iterable bowel syndrome, which I do not have. Okay, uh, it's just sometimes your body just gets a, a gut for all that's uh, unbalanced. It can be caused by stress. It can be caused by a lot of things, you know. Um, and yeah, I, I just don't know. Oh man, and do you feel like it affected your performances? Like, did you feel weaker out there? I mean, I don't feel weaker, but I mean, there's things where, I mean, I'm used to going five rounds, just five rounds, five rounds. So usually typically, you know, the first two fights, it's a hard to get adjustment. This is the best I've ever felt because, you know, I, I'm getting used to being small in general. You know, I'm used to walking around like 142 pounds. Now I'm walking around like, you know, 136. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm still getting, I feel like the last fight I got used to it, but I just like being bigger. It's just nice to have a little more weight on because even after I was doing a knee battle with Danny against the cage, like my ribs are bruised. I would have knee battles in the past and I wouldn't be bruised at all. I mean, even when uh, Wada got behind me and put me in the body triangle and I was twisting to get to him, like I tore all the cartilage in my left uh, rib. So it, it's just, I just feel better when I'm, I'm heavier. Wow. Um, by the way, has anyone ever told you that you have incredibly white teeth? I mean, this is something Thanks, else. man. I appreciate it. <laughs> do you use like <laughs> strips or like what are those things called? You know, like the, the white strip. Do you use anything? I mean, it's just unbelievable. Those are true pearly whites right there. Nah, man. I got Visalign and I brush my teeth twice a day, uh, floss, and uh, I wear my retainers all the time. So uh, I appreciate that. I think uh, teeth are a very important thing in life and uh, I try to take care of mine. Yeah. I mean, I'm blinded by them, to be honest. I mean, they're right there. Like I'm staring right at them. It's unbelievable. Um, you should be Thanks, very man. proud of those. Uh, what was what was the, the scene like for those two events? It looked like a big deal. What was it like? Dude, it was sick. I mean, the whole, the whole week itself. I mean, we started off with uh, the Fan Fest, which is October 5th and 6th. We had uh, Tekken um, Esports the first day. Then the second day we had uh, Shoe Fighter 5. That was fantastic. And then we had my my event, part one, which took place in uh, on TNT. Uh, Angela Lee and Shan the Panda's fight was sick. Christian Lee taking on Doggy. That was an amazing fight. Christian Lee took that fight on two weeks' notice. Yeah. Man puked his brains out. <laughs> um, and then going back that same night to watch kickboxing, Giorgio Petrosian, Rod Tang, uh, Walter Conclave, Brandon Vera taking on Alain Song. I mean, I'm a huge fan. Like, I love kickboxing way more than mixed martial arts like really if i had an event to go oh my god it's kickboxing so much better because the striking so much cleaner like it's just clean striking um if i had the opportunity to go to a uh, kickbox at a k1 event over a mixed martial arts event i would take the, the k1 event really? over the mixed martial arts so why oh don't you god. do it 100 percent Oh, fuck no man those guys take so much damage absolutely not no 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 once no. i like watching once before it's all <sighs> said and done I mean, I've done a kickboxing fight before, but I've never done a, a professional one. I respect what they do, man. And they go through a lot, a lot of damage, brain trauma. And I like not getting, I like, you know, moving, wrestling, and avoid getting hit, you know, with the wrestling and the clenching. So maybe one day, but nah, man, they take too much beating. Who's your favorite kickboxer of all time? Georgia Petrosian. Wow. By far. And you got to, yeah, to watch him. Far. Was that your first time seeing him live? Yeah. No, second time seeing him live. Okay. You meet him? Yeah. Did I meet him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I met him. I said, if I ever come to Italy, I want to train. And he goes, absolutely. Come out. And his manager's wow. like, yeah, if you want to come out to Italy and train, we'll make it happen. Just because his his um sense of distance and he has real good eyes and his combinations are good. Um, and everything he does is very basic. Um, it's nothing too flashy, but 
it's a high level of understanding distance and control and never overextending. And he, he's just legit. Like when I watch him, I'm just like, dude, he's just, I can sense, I can sense that he has an understanding of distance. Now, what about this belt that they gave you? How much does it really weigh? It's gigantic. Do you have it? it it's, it's, it's right oh here. Gosh. It is. It sounds heavy. It, it's heavy, dude. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It's. Oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's my favorite one. I mean, look at that bad boy. It's. Wow. Holy. Uh, uh, weight it's wise, nice, do you know how much it weighs? 22 pounds. I was what? Told. 22 pounds. How much is the UFC one in comparison to the old one that you had? Uh, I think the old one was 12 pounds. Oh my God. 12 pounds, 12.5. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is way heavier. It's beautiful. Now, can you wear it around your waist? I haven't even tried, man. I don't, I mean, I don't think I can. I was, I, when I was walking in the back of the arena with it on my shoulders, I was like, all right, someone's got to take this. This, <laughs> this thing is too heavy. You know, like, no, we want you to carry it so we get you in the shot. And I'm like, y'all have no idea how damn heavy this belt is. And then my buddy wore it, and he goes, damn, dude, this, this is heavy. And I was like, careful, you're going to tear your labrum. So uh, what was it like bringing it back from, from, you know, from, from Japan home? Did you take it on the plane with you? You didn't no, check? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know, hell no, I need to check this thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I took it on a plane with me, uh, but it, it, it was in a um, suitcase, so nobody uh, would, um, it wouldn't draw attention to me. Right, right, right. Um, being on TNT and being live in America and not online or something like that, like it felt bigger. It felt like a big deal. I mean, TNT now in the pro wrestling business, synonymous for many years of the pro wrestling business, NBA, of course, it, f it felt like a different kind of deal. Was this a one-off because it was the 100th event or is this going to be more of the norm going forward? Oh, this is, this is not, you know, one-off event. It's going to be uh, more the norm going forward. Um, obviously when uh, one championship made, this deal with uh, TNT, they're going to be showing more live events. Um, obviously, when one championship gets more North American audience, and we, even when we not when, we, when one championship comes to North America, um, they're going to be broadcasting more on TNT. So this was oh. not a one-off. Everybody can expect uh, to see more uh, one championship on TNT. Is that going to happen in 2020? Um, that's that's a talk, to you, man. That's a talk. To you. I think I think if we go to Mass Square Garden, I think they can sell the place out. I mean, if you bring some high level, uh, just martial artists over there, you bring you know, you bring over Rod Tang, you bring over Georgia Petrosian, you bring over you know Christian Lee. I mean, there there's so many champions, there's so many great athletes in one championship. You bring that over, put some kickboxing, some Muay Thai, Muay Thai fights, and four ounce gloves. I mean. If you're a true martial arts fans and you want to see like, like some high level striking, high level mixed martial arts, I think y you would not be disappointed. Are they talking about MSG for the debut? I mean, they, they want. I'm thinking about. Uh, I from what I've been told, they're talking about East Coast. So I mean, I think MSG okay. is basically. Uh, it's a big arena. It's, a, it's a symbolic place. You know, everybody's fought there before. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if MSG's been one of them. Um, but I remember they said somewhere along the East Coast area. And would you, obviously you'd like to be on that card, right? Or are you enjoying fighting in Asia and don't want to ever fight here in America? Dude, I, I'm not going to lie. I actually enjoy fighting in Asia. Like the whole trip, the, the, the Japanese fans are amazing, just the culture itself. But if I have the opportunity to fight it, you know, uh, in North America again, I, I wouldn't pass up the opportunity. But um, I'm enjoying uh, the trips over to Japan and Singapore and Manila. They're beautiful. They're beautiful places, and there's nothing like experience a different culture. Like one of the things when I was sitting at the event this weekend is literally sitting back and and seeing how diverse so many cultures are here. I mean, we had, you know, a, a gentleman from Russia. We had a gentleman from Brazil, Italy, uh, just all over the place in different dialects and different interpreters going on and doing a rules meeting and just it's literally like we're fighting a, a you know with all the best in the world to where I thought when I was in North America, you, you would have more Americans than actual um, other people like Japanese, Chinese, Korean. I mean, I think we had Chinese, Korean, uh, Japanese, uh, Italy, Brazil, Filipinos. I mean, we, I think we had a whole stew uh, of cultures in this event. Is it fair to say that one championship kind of saved your love for MMA? Uh, I, I always love mixed martial arts, no matter where, where I'm competing. But I think it, it's giving me a new uh, pep in my step yeah. um, to to fight more. I mean, a company that's trying to jump into esports, like literally I'm, I'm in Japan playing the world champion of EVO 2019, Bochan, and Street Fighter V. 
And then the next, you know, four days later, I'm about to compete for a World Grand Prix. Hell yeah, I'm, I, I'm you know, I, I'm, I'm, You're happy. I'm in love with, I, I'm happy, I'm happy. I'm never going to not fall in love. When I'm 85 years old, if I make it that month, that far, I'm always going to love mixed martial arts because I'm a martial artist. So the ne- so you're just to be clear for the fans at home, you're not the flyweight champion. You're the Grand Prix champion, correct? That is correct. I'm the uh, flyweight world Grand Prix champion, not not the flyweight champion. That that's Adriano Marias. And when is that? I mean, that's the obvious next fight, right? Yeah, that's the next fight. Um, that's that's how it was back in the day. You know, everybody now, now everybody's been kind of you know thrown off the you know. The, the mix, from my understanding, when I was growing up watching, you know, Pride and stuff, you have, you know, a Grand Prix uh, in a certain weight class, and then the person who won the Grand Prix will get a chance to fight for the world title. Um, it's basically how you still divide a number one contender. No, you know, popularity contest, you take the best, you know, eight, seven, seven guys in the division, you do a Grand Prix uh, format, the winner gets to fight for the belt. And then if the promotion wants to do another Grand Prix to find a number one contender, that's what they do. And so with this, yes, it gives me the ticket to fight uh, Adrian Marias. Um, and that'll probably be 2020. Right now, I, I just got done fighting three times in a year. I'm going to let my body heal, um, get my health where it needs to be, and then we'll start training and get ready for that. Now, it's all well and good. It's great. You got the belt. You're 3-0. What a great year it's been for you. What a bounce back year. But what happened to the beard? <laughs> what happened? Let me tell you, man. When, when you're a married man, yes, you got three children. Yes. You come home from training camp, and nobody's home. You got you got an hour and a half to yourself. Yes, you, you just get bored. I mean, you just like you know. I, I think I'm gonna give myself a fade, and I, I I messed up, and so now nah, this is what I got. Oh, so you actually tried to style it? You didn't mean to do this. Yeah, I tried to style it. I, I was going, you know, here. I started up here with the fade. You, know, you want to start down here? No. Yeah, see, I would, see, yeah. I think you want to start up here, go light here, and then start going darker, 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 and have it thicker. But I messed up, and I don't like, like the way it looked, and I was like, oh, man. And then the thing is, is, like, when my hair starts to get longer, it gets curly, so it looks like pubic hair on my face. Okay. And so what I wanted to do is just make it be straight, like a, like a, yeah, a straight dude, but it gets okay. curly. So now why don't you go to, to a professional out. to do this? Why would you do this on your own? Because I'm lazy and, okay. I, and I like to, I like to learn because if I have to go to professional to get it done every single time, it's like, it's for me, it's like if I pay for a dietitian, right? right? A dietitian is basically going to, you know, be my, my crutch, my handicap, um, teaching me how to, you know, eat my food and how to cook it or whatever. But if I learn how to do it myself, then I can be my own dietitian and know how my food digests it, breaks down this food. Why is this carbohydrate better than this carbohydrate? Why is this protein better than this protein? So same thing with my beard. If I can learn how to do it myself, I can line my beard up any given damn time I want. I'd be like, I'm going to go, baby, we going out tonight? Yeah, baby, we're going to go out to the club tonight. Let's go, go do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just line this up real quick, get myself a quick fade. And so that's why I keep on practice. Practice makes perfect. All right, so so you're human after all. You're not, you know, super human. You mess up your beard as well. But by the way, it, you look like young DJ here, like not like super young <laughs> WEC DJ, like early UFC. So I don't mind it. It felt a little like a throwback, if you will. But refresh. Everybody says, "Damn, dude, you look like back at working at Red Lobster." I'm like, "Hey, hey, hey." The good old days. You know, I mean, I, the good old days. Hey, I'm glad I'm able to, you know, shave, take 20 years off my life, and still look good. Yes. And by the way, you're an AEW fan, I hear. Based on your social media, yes, yeah, I, I am. So it's funny. I'm I'm kind of like a closet uh, wrestling wrestling fan. Um, so AEW, yeah, I was watching it, and I was just sitting there. Uh, me, and my my wife Destiny, we're sitting here watching it, just seeing them do our thing. And Kenny Omega, it's always funny. Each time I hear his name, I always think of uh, Omega Red from uh, the X Men. So yeah, I'm a fan. That's your guy. All right. Well, uh, big things happening over there. Congratulations. Great event. I saw the the Ong Lang Sang um, victory over Brandon Vera and Angela Lee, of course, and Christian yeah. Lee, the brothers. Unfortunately, Eddie Alvarez couldn't compete on the card, um, but I talked to him recently. It sounds like he's getting better. So uh, congrats on everything, my man. Great year for you, and I really appreciate you doing this after flying home from Japan. You're always a, you're always a true mensch, DJ, and we appreciate it on this side of the table. Thanks, man. Errol, we got to get you out to uh, one of the events of one championship, get you covered, man. I think you'll have a good time. MSG, get I'm there. Can you come to MSG so I can come to the event? Well, it's like you got to get the whole feeling of the culture, wow. go out there to Japan and All right. go see some high level kickboxing, some Muay Thai. We'll get you out there. Don't worry. We'll get you out there. All right. Fair enough. For now, thank you. 
We appreciate it. Enjoy the victory and feel better. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it, man. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.